So Hi, Louise. Hi, Shadira. And you were here at Science Fair 2008 at the Bel Air Community Center, and the topic of your project is Too Little, Too Late. Yes. Louise, is this part two of your project last year? Yes, it is. We wanted to see how much the pollution had increased or decreased since last year, but this time we kind of zoned in on six main areas on St. Martin. So if you would like, you can see the map <laughs> over there. Okay. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Shira. So, tell us a little bit about the map. These are the six points in the moon on St. Martin that we found that we found were at most risk and felt that we need to test to make sure. Okay. <laughs> Pretty nice display, I must say. Thank you. So, Louise, tell us a little bit about what you tested in the waters this time. So, we tested for many different things. For example, we did temperature, because temperature decides how much oxygen is in the water and how sensitive an organism is to disease. And we also tested for phosphates and nitrates. Phosphates and nitrates come from sewage runoff. Nitrate is a nutrient in decomposition, and the more things that decompose, the more oxygen they use up. The same thing as phosphates. Phosphates are also found in detergents, as we all know. And phosphates um, rely on animal and plant growth. For example, our algae bloom. If there's too much phosphate in the water, there'll be too many algae blooms. And since algae survives on photosynthesis, it'll also, again, use up too much oxygen. Okay. So tell me, where did you test this time, and um, what did you find in your testing areas? Well, we mainly tested the Simpson Bay Lagoon, Little Bay Pond, Great Salt Pond, Rolandis Canal, and some other two other areas. But our main concern was the Rolandis Canal, mainly because it had the highest levels of phosphate and nitrate. And at this moment, the oxygen levels in the Rolandis Canal are so low, fish are actually jumping up to try and get for air, as you can see in our picture right here. Okay. And I, I also understood from a previous video made by Laura Bainsdorf that you guys saw uh, some people fishing in the Rolandis Canal while you were doing your research. Yes, we, while we were filming, we saw some people fishing in the Rolandis Canal. We actually went to go and ask them what they were doing with the fish, and they explained that they were going to eat it. But as we all know, there was a, they found they actually caught a lot of fish. They had a whole bucket full, and they say this is what they do quite often. They go and they catch, and that's what they eat. Right. So, Roxanne, what's your input in the whole uh, project? Um, what we did is we also tested for four other things, of which were coliform, VOD, DO, and pH. Okay, what's B, B, what's all those? Uh? <laughs> coliform is a bacteria, uh -huh. which will indicate if there is sewage in the water, and of which all the six areas were contaminated, showing that all the areas were contaminated like input in the water. VOD is biochemical oxygen demand, of which this is the amount of oxygen that bacteria is absorbing from the water. If this level is too high, once again, the fishes and marine life do not have enough oxygen to sustain life. Okay. DO is dissolved oxygen, the actual level of oxygen within the water itself. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about your testing kits. Um, where did you get help with uh, getting the testing kits? Did um, other um, uh, or NGOs or did the AUC Medical School help you this year as well? Um, no, this year we got from our science teacher. She bought us a kit, and as you can see, this is how we tested mainly for all of them. As you can see, you have all the tests that we did, and then you have on the other side the test turbidity is the relative clarity of water. So just because the water looks polluted and not clear, that doesn't mean it's not clear. So we also, and then we have the pH strips, and we tested the temperature of the water by going to the site and testing the temperature there so that it wouldn't be biased. And then we did also our second experiment, which was about the mangroves, because mangroves are like the filter kings of all the plants. So what we did is we took our six different waters and we fed them to six different mangroves. Okay. So, for example, this is the Rolandis Canal water. As you can see, it's very soapy. Once again, this is the water taken directly from the Rolandis Canal without anything added to it by nope. you. Nothing at all. Straight That's pretty Rolandis scary. Canal. That's that really is so fo so yes, full to the top. If we shake it, it'll actually be pretty bad. If you see, it's 
quite bad. It's mainly because the laundromat, once again, that dumps all the detergents into the water. As how, uh, how many laundromats did you identify that empty into the area that gets into the Rolandas Canal? Well, we found one main laundromat, but that dumps every day continuously. So it's not like one time, one day. It's many times a day. And we actually went there with Paul Moy, and we videotaped all this dumping going straight into the water. Do you know where to look? Just give us an idea, indication where the location is, more or less. It's across from the crematorium. Yeah, so it's in Sucker Garden. Yes, in Sucker Garden. So as you can see, this is our Rolandus Canal mangrove. We've had it for two months, and we fed it with the water from, as you can see, it's he, he, he looks pretty weak. Yes, he's very sad. <laughs> so rather than our fresh pond, the fresh pond water was a lot cleaner than the Rolandus Canal. And you can see the quite the big difference between the growth cycle of the mangroves. They all start at the same height from the same place, so it wasn't biased. And you can see a major difference, proving that the levels of pollutants in the water will affect a mangrove's growth cycle. And if these are such strong plants, you can imagine what other animals and plants in the area are experiencing right now. Okay. Now, one of the other projects here at Science Fair was proving that a lot of sewage gets into the fresh pond. But um, uh, maybe you can explain that, you know, basically uh, some sewage is uh, okay for the mangroves because they can absorb that. But when you're talking now about nitrates and some of those other uh, unmentionable things you were talking about, Roxanne, um, maybe that might be more damaging, especially the phosphates and, and other things coming from laundry mats. Yeah, those are more damaging mainly because they use up more oxygen. The, uh, for sewage, yes, some of the sewage, uh, like we said, they're the filter king, so mangroves can filter them out. But when it comes to phosphates and nitrates, it's all mainly about taking up oxygen. Everything needs oxygen to survive. And when you have too many phosphates and nitrates in the water, it takes up a very large amount of oxygen because the algae rate increases, the decomposition rate increases, and it just uses up that much more oxygen and at least that much less for the rest of the aquatic life. Right. Interesting. So tell me, what else did you do with, uh, for instance, you have some computer monitors here? Yes. What's all that about? We, you, went, yeah? we went to the Roland Canal itself on the bridge next to Greenhouse and interviewed tourists to see what their take on the situation was. Obviously, tourists are a main economy, so maybe if they don't like it, then it can show the government that something needs to be going out. And all the tourists that we went to talk to said it was disgusting. They loved our beaches, but this was their final image that they left the island with. Yeah. And they just said, this is disgusting. And in fact, there was one guy who said that when he was 32 years ago here, he could see the bottom of the canal. And now it's like, how deep is it now? It's so murky and disgusting, and they all feel the same way as we do. Right. So what's what's your next step, uh, Louise? I know you're going on to uh, to um, to college or university in the Netherlands soon to to study uh, environment uh, subjects and uh, but topics. But um, uh, what do you intend to do with this uh, project? Um, how can you go further by you know educating the people, or maybe what what steps will you be taking with the politicians? Well, what we're doing right now is we're handing out the biodegrade the cloth bags to people to help raise awareness. We have, we're going to start showing this project at many different conventions because it is that much further than last year. Yeah. You mean also with Enviro Week with coming Enviro up in Week. June? Because we're that much further. Last year we did E. coli and this year we're that step further. So now we're going to be able to go to schools and really explain more what is in the water and what they can do to help. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, girls. Thank you, Roxanne. You guys did a great job again this year. Thank you, Louise. All the yep. best with your future endeavors. Thank you. And uh, we're going to miss you next year for Science Fair, but I'm sure Roxanne will come up with something, again, original and enlightening for us in the environment. Right, Roxanne? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.